Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Hi, I'm Mike. Oh, hey there. This is Mike, Family DIY TV. Today, I want to show you how to build this beautiful bathtub shower. Okay, this was a, a shower stall with shower doors. Uh, the wife didn't like that. She hated it ever since we moved in. It did bother me, uh, but it really bothered her. She would not leave me alone about it. So we decided we're going to gut everything and we we're going to put in a new tub, new tile, and all new plumbing hardware. Because as you know, a shower has the drain in the middle. We need to move it to the end. Okay. A shower also doesn't have a spout for the water to fill the tub because there's no tub because it's a shower. All right. We also have to move a lot of this other plumbing. So we're going to show you that whole process. Um, we're going to give you a lot of tips. Um, this isn't going to be a detailed how to, but we're going to clip away a couple times, do some time lapse and show you and give you a couple tips as we go through it. Okay. So I think you will definitely gain a lot out of watching this video. If you're thinking about doing your bathroom, if you're thinking about doing it yourself or you're thinking about hiring someone, at least you can watch this video and see what does it entail to do a project like this, to redo a bathroom. Bathrooms and kitchens are the worst um, out of all of the house renovations you can do yourself. Um, I would say besides maybe a roof. Roof is definitely the worst, I think. But kitchens and bathrooms are terrible. Um, but they're not that they're not bad enough that uh, you know if you wanted a nice bathroom that uh, you know I wouldn't do it. So you know I would definitely do it. It's definitely worth it. It's really a temporary pain for a long term gain. Okay, so please subscribe, please like, and please sit down and get ready to watch this video. I appreciate you. All right, so the first step of redoing a shower or a bathroom is a sledgehammer, right? We're just going to take the sledgehammer. No, actually, that's not it. It actually started about a month ago, maybe two months ago. It actually started probably years ago. Uh, me and a wife talked about this a lot, um, going over what exactly we wanted. Um, the way I like to plan my projects is I like to say, kind of pie in the sky. How much money, imagine money was not an issue. What would you want? All right. And, you know, you may think of a lot of crazy things that maybe you can't afford, but you may work to a more reasonable thing that you can afford. Okay. So... Um, or you may go, you know what, uh, this is exactly what I want, but I can't afford it right now. So maybe I'll push it out six months or whatever. So, you know, basically my point is you want to do this, start this process with planning. You don't just jump in and rip stuff out. That's the fun part. Really, the planning is really where you want to spend a lot of your time. Okay. So like with the shower, for example, uh, you know, we need to think about, you know, what's this going to look like when it's done? Okay. So it's going to be tile. All right. How, the, how are we going to attach the tile to the wall? Okay, the wall, what are we attaching to? Is that the, is a thin set and the wall that we're attaching to, is that compatible? Okay, the waterproofing, is that compatible with the thin set? Is that compatible with the tile? Okay, so all this stuff, you have to do all this research ahead of time uh, before you take a hammer to anything, okay? And that'll make your project go a lot faster and it'll actually make it a lot less stressful because you won't run into all these uh, surprises. You're gonna run into surprises, you wanna keep them in the middle, all right? So, First thing we're going to do, actually in the shower, we're going to just take this all apart, uh, remove it all, get it all out of here, get down the studs, and then we're going to build it all back and I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, so just a quick update. So everything has been pulled out, right? Um, we've cleaned everything. 
Um, unfortunately, we did find, it's fortunate and unfortunate. Uh, this is actually old rot um, or mold or whatever you want to call it. It was old um, and we know that because first of all, the insulation has all been replaced. So this was an old, been here for about 10 years in this condition. Um, we did do a moisture meter reading, all came back dry. Um, but just to be careful, uh, just as a double double insurance, we did this mold armor stuff, sprayed it all down. So actually it looks a lot worse than it did initially, um, especially down there. It's like bleached. So it looks worse, but, um, but yeah, that's it. So now what we're going to do is actually, we're going to bring the tub up and we're going to set it in place, dry fit it, um, to see where our, um, our, our drain is going to be. Okay. So we're going to set it in place mark it and then we can pull this all pull the tub back out and then start putting our drain together all right that'll be the next step all right so now now we're at the um the drain insulation part okay of the tub so here's the tub it's in here now um so the way i usually do it is i put the the plumbing on the tub okay so you can see that this is installed I glue this contraption all together. This is where the overflow pipe will go. We'll add that afterwards. That'll be the last thing that we do. So we'll just leave this disconnected until after the tub is set. Okay, now we're, so now we're gonna worry about just this part. So this part, what you do is once you install it, and it's still, this is gonna be a little tough because everything's, every house and every plumbing situation is gonna be a little bit different. Okay, so but what I did was um, I measured from the center of this to the center of that pipe, which is about five inches. Okay, so we get five inches. So let's remember that that's five inches. Before we did anything, we actually dry fitted the tub and we put a mark on exactly where the tub was going to exhaust. So this is where the, if you were, the tub was here, this is where the, the, the water would go down. Okay. But we need to account for all that additional plumbing there. So that's where the five inches comes into play. So the, the pipe that comes up actually needs to be here. It needs to be five inches in front of this one or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so it's five inches apart. So that's why we made this little diagram. Then we cut it out. Okay, then we use that diagram to say, and we just basically move the numbers to here. So this is where the, this is the bath or this is the tub but this is actually where the plumbing is, okay? So, now we're basically just building everything back. And what we're gonna do is we're going to install that piece as the, the bathtub piece flush with the floor, minus about an eighth of an inch, okay? The idea is that if it's installed right here, Right, right where this is, about an eighth inch below here, when you go to install the piece from the top, you'll actually pull all the plumbing and make everything nice and tight. Okay, there is a little bit of play in this in this PVC. You know, and you'll see if you grab your PVC and move it, there's a little bit of play. So about an eighth of an inch is okay. All right, and that's how you can basically plumb these bathtubs without having to cut access holes and things like that. Okay, so. You know, that's how I'm doing this one. Um, it may or may not work for yours, uh, but I just wanted to kind of walk through that. I hope that made sense. Basically, we can't change this, so that's why we start here. This is where the tub drain is gonna be. Then we put all the drain, all the stuff on the tub. We measure the distance, five inches. That's where we get the five inches. We know that's where this needs to go down into the ground. And then that's where we're gonna build everything back. So that's, this is actually the trap. This is actually, you can't see the plumbing is back there, but that's what it's gonna be like, just like that. And then I'm gonna take that one off and attach it here as, as well. And this will all be put together. And I'll show you that once we get this all plumbed up. <laughs>
So this is where the overflow will attach, and this is where obviously the tub will attach. So these are those marks that we made, all right? So we're dead center is right there. Now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna dry fit the tub, just make sure that this does line up and that we didn't do something crazy. Um, then we'll take out the tub, put our mortar bed down, um, and then reinstall the tub, reinstall the drain, everything will be good. Since that time, we've gotten the drain set, we've gotten the tub set, okay? Um, we really didn't run into any issues with the drain. Uh, we had a little bit of an issue with the overflow, okay? I actually miscalculated and uh, we had to use a rubber coupling to join these two together uh, because I cut the PVC too short. So I guess the lesson learned there is, I mean, you, when I ran into the issue, I figured I was going to, have to cut everything out and like redo everything. But, you know, I kind of took a little bit of a breath, walked away, came back and went, you know what? This is just an overflow. A rubber coupling is definitely good enough for even if the water was running through it. So it's definitely good enough for air. Uh, the point is basically, you know, try to think a little bit outside the box um, and, you know, usually a solution will come to you. Um, another thing, whenever you're doing DIY plumbing, one thing that I do, and I have started, and I always do now, is I buy a lot of extra than what I actually think I need for the project. So if I know I'm doing inch and a half plumbing, and I'm connecting to a two inch line, okay, I'm gonna buy enough to do it in two inch, I'm also gonna buy enough to do it in one inch, and then I'm probably, in, in, in the one and a half inch, I'm gonna buy another four times the amount of stuff that I need. Honestly, it sounds crazy. I leave the store with a ton of stuff, but you never know what you're gonna get into. Okay, same thing with the supply. I left the supply, I left Home Depot with two bags of fittings because I just didn't know exactly what I was gonna get into and exactly how this was gonna lay out. I actually bought three tub stub outs, three different types. The one I didn't think I was gonna use is actually the only one that would have worked because of my specific layout. So just lesson learned, just buy more than what you think you need, especially when you're doing plumbing. You can return it all. I have a full bucket, Home Depot bucket, of all plumbing stuff that's going back. So buy okay. everything. Buy everything and then buy more. Believe me, it's better than going back and forth to the store 50 times. Okay, so once we got we got this tub set, we got the drain in, we got the overflow in. We then, um, we then filled this thing up with water. We let the water go down. No drain, no, no floods, no leaks. Then we moved on to our supply, okay? So... The only thing with the supply you really need to pay attention to, honestly, is the depth of it. You really need to, can, that's the only thing you probably can mess up here, in my opinion. If you could do normal plumbing, then you could do this. But really the depth of the fixture is kind of the most complicated thing, for me at least, um, because you have to set this thing in the wall and then you have to tile over it. So you have to know exactly where this thing needs to be. So just do a little bit of research before you do yours. There's a lot of videos, there's actually a guy that does like this on YouTube and he does a great job. So I'm not gonna sit here and show you how to exactly set this and where to set it, but just think about that, you know, when you're going through the process, watch a bunch of videos on how to set the depth, read the instructions that come with it and really make sure that you set this at the right depth. Cause if you don't, you're screwed. Um, if you tile it and then you have to go through the other side and if it's an exterior or even more screwed. All right, so then once we got our supply in, we then layered everything with plastic. Before we layered it with plastic, we pre-treated all the wood with a mold a mold killer, even though the, it's, it's very old stained wood. It's not really active mold that was there because it was all dry, tested with a moisture meter. 
But just to be careful, we just sprayed it down with the mold, mold killer. Then we put our um, vapor barrier slash, you know, water barrier up. Okay, we had to actually vent build this bench up. We had to, we we're building this wall up a little bit. Um, the tub is set in concrete or in mortar, actually not concrete, mortar. You want the fine mortar, not concrete. Um, and the tub is clipped in. So now we're at the stage where we're actually going to, um, we're actually gonna take protecto, we're actually gonna take a, a tape and we're actually gonna tape this seam to the, to the wall, okay? All the way around. Then we're gonna come back with cement board. We're gonna go cement board over all of this and then we're gonna mesh tape all the, all the joints. We're gonna thin set all the joints, just like kind of basically like you finish drywall. Um, then on top of that, we're gonna come back with a water proofing membrane. We got, we got um, it's called Aqua Defense. You paint that on basically like a paint, two coats. It's like really simple, no one can really mess it up. Then finally, we can actually start tiling this bathroom. Okay, and we'll, we'll, we'll give an update through all of that. And if we think of anything or anything comes up that you know would help a DIYer, we'll let you know. Oh, hey there. If you're still watching this video, I wanna ask you a question. Can you please hit that subscribe button? Please hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Let me get back to my shower. All right, so um, we're getting ready to put a hardy backer on, um, onto the studs. Uh, before I did that, I just wanted to quickly show you something um, that I've seen and I think it's a really good idea. Basically, you buy this Protecto wrap. Uh, really, it's just it's just um, any kind of type of flashing. It's, a, it's like a tape and you tape from half, about half of the flange and then you just tape up, okay? And all this is doing really is just calls, it's stopping any water from going underneath and up if it was going to do that, okay? <laughs> So we ran it all the way around. Um, it, we ran it on top of our bench here, or our, basically our shelf. This is just additional. We're actually gonna be doing party backer on top of this, and then we're doing liquid waterproofing. So this is just a double, 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 double check. Um, and we laid it like shingles, right? We laid it like shingles, yeah. We started from the bottom and worked our way up so that if water does get there, it will work this work its way down and out. Okay, um, so that is it. Now we're gonna get to laying Hardy backer. dry, do two coats, and start tiling. We are at tile day. Okay, so this is what we're currently working with. Um, it's green because we put waterproofing on it, okay? So basically the, the process here was we put our cement board on, so we used Hardy Backer, okay? We attach that directly to the studs, okay? Um, after we did the Hardy Backer, we went around, just like you would do with um, spackling drywall, is we used the grout that we're gonna use to attach the tile to the wall. We used that same grout. We actually filled in any big spots Okay, kind of pre-fill them. Anything that maybe you can stick maybe half of your pinky in. Um, if it's bigger than that, it, it shouldn't be that big. But, um, but we filled in all the corners. 
you know, anywhere there's a corner we pre-filled. Then we went back with fiber tape. So you can actually see it. I'm not sure if it comes through, but you can see actually there's a little bit of it there, like a fiber tape. And we taped all the seams, all the corners. Okay, every seam has been fiber taped. Then we went back over that with a skim coat of the thin set that we're gonna to use to set the tile. Let that dry for a day, okay? Then we came back with the waterproofing, okay? And we covered the entire thing. You'd see it's green, um, it's Malpe or whatever. I forget how to say the name, but, and then we coated, basically you paint that on two coats and it makes it waterproof. Um, you really wanna make sure you get in all the corners and things like that, okay? One thing to think about is the tile is really a decoration, okay? It's not a waterproofer, okay? So you wanna be able to take a shower in this stall or whatever you wanna call it before you put tile on. So meaning it's already been waterproofed, right? So right now I can actually take a shower in here and this won't leak at all, okay? Once you can do that and think that in your head, then you're ready for tile, okay? If you can't shower in this stall with without the tile and it would and it would leak then you're not ready okay the tile is merely decoration it's like brick on a house okay um it's just there for really decoration it's not structure it's not waterproofing it's nothing okay so again tile do not tile until this thing is completely waterproof everywhere okay so now we're going to move on to the step of actually tiling this all right, so that process started a few days ago with laying out this tile different ways. You can see I have kind of a layout here now. Um, that's the kind of the hardest part is, is kind of coming out, trying to figure out what the pattern is gonna be. Now, you could sit here for probably days and hours and hours and, and really beat your head over, you know, where do you want the lines to be? Do you want a full tile here, full tile there? And I think it's a good thing to do, but when, once it's stopping progression, then you probably know if you've done enough analysis and you're ready to move forward. And what I would say is, if you have any other tile work in your house, walk around, look at the other tile work that you think is okay, and start looking at the grout lines. Look at how close those grout lines maybe are to the wall. Maybe they're, you've never noticed that, and you would not, you wouldn't notice it here, okay? So, you know, use what you have in your house as maybe like a little bit of a guiding light, uh, and maybe that'll help you make the decision on how critical do you have to be on where tiles line up and things like that, okay? So I'm gonna get on the tiling. I'm gonna work on my bottom row, getting that completely level, completely perfect. Usually I do that a day before. I do the rest of the wall, but I'm just running out of time. So I'm gonna do it all today. But usually what I do is I do that first row. I spend a few hours doing it and I make sure it's perfect level dead level and I let it set. I don't, I don't put any tiles on top of it, but I'm not gonna have that luxury this time. We'll do a time lapse of the tile and then we'll kind of wrap this shower to bathtub up. Let's go. Whoa. Uh, 
uh, oil rub bronze look. Um, and we're very happy with it. It's super deep, uh, very comfortable for the white. That's really what the important thing was. We did this all for the white. Uh, I, I was fine with the pink look before, but she's happy. So if she's happy, I'm happy, and we know we did a good job. Me and her did this ourselves, everything, got it the entire place, redid everything, um, you know, even replaced the vanity, which we're not gonna get into with this video, all new mirrors, light pictures, everything. The big thing was this, um, and new floors. This took us about four weeks, okay? So we worked on it every weekend, um, and then a little bit during the week here and there, you know, maybe doing a little bit of waterproofing or something like that. So this is something you could do in four weeks if you follow the steps. Um, uh, and maybe think and also plan ahead a lot like I like I explained earlier okay. and if you could please like please subscribe please leave me a comment below I appreciate you and I appreciate you watching and thank you we're out